Hello everyone, good evening. Hello again, this is Mr. Alan Matus and I am your nurse educator for tonight. And again, for tonight, we're going to be having some questions on nursing prioritization and delegation. So before anything else, I would like to introduce myself. My name is uh, Alan Matus and I am a nurse educator and I have been uh, teaching nurses for over 25 years. And uh, also, I'm an author. I uh, published the book, uh, Simple, Fast and Easy, and class review that you can find in Amazon. So again, thank you very much, everybody, for being here tonight. I think that we have a lot of people joining us. So hopefully you will join because for tonight, uh, we have some exciting uh, uh, prices for you. And of course, uh, at the same time, we have some updates, you know, or a little bit of uh, discussing again uh, the uh, NCLEX, of course. And of course, we have a few questions that I'll be discussing with you about uh, uh, delegation and prioritization in the NCLEX. Okay, so and thank you very much, everybody, as well for spreading this uh, session. We have a lot of students who have been reaching out to me and asking about the schedule because you all, you all have been, uh, uh, I think, satisfied a little bit uh, about the session and also your learning and uh, you're passing your NCLEX. Okay, so without further ado, everyone, uh, let's have some slides, you know, that I want to present to you uh, before we start. Okay, but also before anything else, I would like to welcome some people. Okay, so we have uh, Loretta. So Loretta, hi, how are you for uh, tonight? Okay, so welcome here. Okay, and then also we have uh, Lloyd. So Lloyd, I know that you're from Florida and nice to meet you last night and hope that you will like our academy. And also we have Melanie. So Melanie is also joining us tonight. Um, also we have... Um, Menchi. So Menchi is also joining us tonight. So thank you very much for being here. And also all the attendees, uh, make sure that you comment, you put your rationale for your answer. And again, my goal for tonight is not really to uh, teach you everything, but learn the principles on how to answer the uh, concepts on prioritization and delegation. Okay. And also, um, my goal is always to make the concepts uh, simple, fast and easy to, to learn. Okay. All right. So, so the first thing that I would like to cover everyone is going to be our contest for tonight. So again, we're bringing back tonight the uh, free 90 day online access uh, NCLEX review. Okay, so you, um, by joining here tonight, um, we will get your names and put them on a website and then we will uh, randomly select the winner. Okay, so whoever uh, whose name appears first in the ranking will be the winner of tonight's session. And we will post uh, in our business page or in our Facebook page who wins tonight's session. So probably that's going to be uh, tomorrow or it's going to be uh, tonight also. So um, just being here tonight, you uh, that's your entry already for winning the, the, uh, the free 90-day online access review. Okay, so this is really very exciting and I know that uh, you all have been requesting to have this 90-day online access review. And also I would appreciate also if you could put on the comment section also uh, in which part of the world you're coming from. Are you from the US? Are you from California? Or maybe you're from another country. So place that in the comment section so that we can show that in the, in the live stream. Okay, all right. So who else is here tonight? So we have uh, Norma. Hi, Norma. Hi, hello tonight. Okay, thanks for joining us. Okay, so we also have, I think, uh, uh, Audrey. Hi, Audrey. Thanks for being here again today, uh, tonight. I think uh, you have been very consistent in joining us in this session. Okay, so for tonight, we're going to have um, a discussion a little bit about the test plan. So a lot of students have been asking me about the test plan in the NCLEX and if there is one uh, very important document or very important uh, information that you need to know uh, with the NCLEX, it's going to be the test plan because the test plan provides you the blueprint of the topics that are going to be covered in the NCLEX. Not only the blueprint or the topics coming up in the NCLEX, okay, or covered in the NCLEX, but of course the, uh, the percentage the percentage that you will receive for these categories. So meaning that you don't uh, leave the NCLEX exam 
without answering questions on these topics. Okay, so the first one that we have is going to be the end collects our end test plan that is in 2019. Um, the test plan is being revised and updated every three years. So 2019, which means to say that somewhere in 2021 or 22 maybe is the revision date of the test plan. For the NCLEX RN test plan, the very uh, main reason why I really um, emphasize delegation of prioritization as part of my uh, uh, focus in NCLEX review is because management of care for the NCLEX RN is 20%. It's 20% management of care. So that's a big bulk of uh, concepts um, comprising your NCLEX examination. So 20% and part of that will be leadership and management and of course, management and supervision of care. So you have to look at that. And then the next one you can see is also physiological adaptation. Um, also, you can see that safety and infection control is a big bulk as well. Safety and infection control is 12% of your NCLEX exam. And then also you have your pharmacology, which is another, um, I think that's somewhere in the 15%, I guess, okay? So take note of the test plan and the reason why we focus on management of care, uh, because this is a big bulk in your NCLEX examination, okay? So another one is going to be the NCLEX uh, PN test plan. So we all know that the NCLEX PN test plan was updated this year, 2020, and the decision last April was to, uh, increase the passing standard a little bit okay so the test is a little bit more uh, difficult okay um, not really very difficult probably but the passing standard has been increased this 2020 and the revision for this um, NCLEX PN test plan will be in 2023 so it's every three years so for the NCLEX PN test plan you can see that a big bulk also there is the coordination of care or coordinated care which is somewhere like in the 21 percent i guess and again you can see that you have infection control then you also have pharmacology as well so these are very important concepts you know this is a graph that i really want you to look at because it really tells you the uh, distribution of content for the nclex pn test plan okay so very important everyone all right, so now I think some of you were, uh, were putting in the comment section where you're coming from. So we have, I think, from San Marino, California. So Monica is from San Marino. Oh no, San Mateo, California. Then we also have from Riverside, okay. Emion from Riverside. And then also Norma, uh, she is from Torrance, California. Very good. And then who else? Okay, where are you coming from, everyone? Okay, so, hmm. So Riverside uh, from United Arab Emirates, uh, Liza or Lisa is in UAE. So thanks for joining us tonight. You know, nice to see you here. Okay. So you are in the entry for winning the raffle for tonight. Okay. Now I would just like to make a very quick announcement, everyone. I just discussed the test plan. Uh, talking about the test plan, I'll be discussing a little bit more about it in my upcoming free one hour NCLEX review program webinar. So this is open to all uh, to all students, to all uh, potential students of Matus Nursing Review. Uh, so students who are inquiring about our program because we offer different options. So you can join me in this free one hour NCLEX review program webinar. It's going to be on June 29, 7 p.m. Pacific time. And that's gonna be a Monday, I guess. So um, visit our webpage, our Matus Nursing Review Academy.com and you can sign in and the first part of the the uh, webinar will be discussing a little bit about the test plan and then after that i'll be introducing the different the different programs that we offer to students and also remember that we have one big change coming in the next few uh, days we're announcing a new addition to our program and you'll be very excited with that okay so we're adding actually a, a possibly a q bank for a uh, for our uh, program and this Q bank is basically uh, really more uh, more questions for you. Although in our NCLEX Academy, we already have hundreds of quizzes and questions for the NCLEX. Okay, all right. So take note of this, everybody. All right, everybody. Are you ready for our question tonight? So we have several questions that I have prepared for you for the uh, delegation and prioritization concepts. Okay. So where else are you all coming from, everybody? Okay. 
Are you excited, everyone? Can you please say yes in the comment section? Okay, yes, yes. How excited are you, everybody? So we're going to have our first question for tonight. And do you know the focus of our concept for tonight? The, the, the focus of our concept for tonight is uh, going to be nervous system, neurology. Okay, so we'll be, this, we'll be having disease conditions focusing on neurology. Okay, so let's see. Okay. So we actually also have from the Philippines and Oakley, California. So Ray is from Oakley, California. Okay. All right. So that's good. All right. So let's have our first question for tonight, everyone. Okay. So this is going to be a concept on neurology, everybody. Okay. So let's have the question. The nurse is doing rounds at the start of the morning shift in the medical surgical nursing unit. Which of these clients require immediate intervention? A, the 60-year-old client with Parkinson's disease who presents slurring of speech and unsteady gait. B, the 35-year-old client with trigeminal neuralgia who did not eat breakfast due to severe facial pain. C, the 50-year-old client with multiple sclerosis who complains of fatigue and impaired coordination. Or D, the 70-year-old client with advanced Alzheimer's disease who has periods of confusion. So what do you think, everyone, is the answer to this question? Okay, so again, our focus for tonight is going to be neurologic disorders. So you have four neurologic disorders here. So what comes first? And always remember that when you're talking about prioritization, always remember ABC, airway, breathing, circulation, don't forget also Maslow's hierarchy of needs and also don't forget safety, okay? So who do you think here is needs immediate intervention, okay? Immediate intervention, okay? A, B, C, or D, okay? A, B, C, or D. So you're doing your morning rounds, okay? So what do you think will be the priority for this situation? What comes first? You know, you have to remember that what is most important? What is the most important? What are you really going to be concerned about, you know? So most of you answered letter what, okay? So most of you answered letter B. Let's see if B is the answer. Okay, how many per uh, percent sure are you everyone that it's letter B? Can you put the percent? Is it 100% everybody? So let's dissect the question, okay? So let's see the answer to this question, everyone. Okay, all right. So the correct answer is going to be, very good, everybody. That would be letter B, excellent. Okay, so letter B is the answer, and why is B the answer? Okay, you have to remember that for letter A, we can eliminate that a little bit because uh, unsteady gait and slurring of speech are parts of symptoms of the of, of Parkinson's disease, okay? So unsteady gait and slurring of speech is part of the manifestations. And uh, you may be thinking that in Parkinson's disease, unsteady gait, this patient is prone to falls. However, letter A, there's no indication that there's any safety issue. There's no safety issue in A really that says that, for example, the patient is about to take the staircase or go down the staircase and the patient has unsteady gait. So, that means it's a concern because it's a safety issue uh, regarding falls. However, A just basically is saying that you have someone with slurring of speech and unsteady gait. Okay, now, so you may say A may be a concern a little bit, but then let's look at the other options. Let us see 50-year-old client with multiple sclerosis, a complaints of fatigue and impaired coordination. Uh, let us see uh, fatigue and impaired coordination is, uh, are also signs and symptoms of multiple sclerosis. Um, letter D, the 70-year-old client with advanced Alzheimer's is also, um, you, it only says has periods of confusion. So meaning when you say has periods of confusion, meaning that's part of the manifestation of Alzheimer's disease, right? However, you have to think that, um, well, if it says letter D that Alzheimer's disease patients suddenly had uh, uh, confusion, confusion, agitation, screaming, for example, that's a change in condition, okay? However, your letter B, so take note of that, letter B is a patient who did not eat breakfast because due to severe facial pain. 
So you have to address the pain of that patient so that the patient can eat. So very good, everybody. So the answer is going to be letter B, okay? So pain. So you see, not all prioritization questions in the NCLEX will focus on airway, breathing, and circulation, okay? So at this time, the focus is going to be nutrition. So you really have to look at each option, everybody, and really see who is in greatest danger. Always use the process of elimination. I always tell you that. Eliminate two options, okay, so that you narrow down your choices. So very good, everybody, okay? So Jericho said, client is in distress due to severe pain. Of course, and it's severe facial pain as well. Very good rational, okay? And also, um, uh, yes, yeah, so Audrey said also letter B because of severe pain, which comes after airway, breathing, and circulation. Nutrition as well. You know, nutrition is a concern. The person did not eat breakfast okay very good all right so we also have hi ray okay so hi paul uh paul already passed the NCLEX actually and paul has been attending our facebook live very good thank you paul for recommendation okay so that's the answer to our question everyone let's go to number two everybody so number two is another four patients you always know that prioritization in the NCLEX usually will be having four patients right so usually you have to choose the most unstable one reminder to everybody it's possible that some options are unstable or it's possible that all of them will be unstable but you always have to choose the most unstable patient okay so always go back to your airway breathing circulation don't forget your neuro neuro means the level of consciousness of your patient that's also a priority and it indicates if your patient is stable or unstable especially if it is a change in neurologic status anything that is sudden anything that is a change may indicate that your patient is unstable or another one is safety issue so always go also for safety so don't forget your airway breathing circulation abc neuro and safety as well okay so very good everybody and don't forget your nutrition as well that could come in as well so let's go to the next question everyone okay so we will now have your number two question okay so number two question is going to be, the nurse in the neuro intensive care unit receives the report from the outgoing nurse during the end of shift conference. Which of the following clients need to be checked first? A, the 45 year old client who just returned to the unit after a cerebral angiography procedure. B, the 55 year old client with ischemic stroke who shows expressive aphasia and left arm paralysis. Let us see the 48-year-old client with a presumptive diagnosis of meningitis due to fever, stiff neck, and photophobia. Or D, the 30-year-old client with head injury who has a blood pressure of 160 over 110 millimeters of mercury, bradycardia, and also depressed respiration. Okay, so letter A, B, C, or D, everybody. Okay, so is A the priority? Because letter A, that could be an unstable patient a little bit. It could be a concern also because that's a patient who recently had a cerebral angiography procedure, okay? Or maybe it can be letter B as well. So put your answers, everybody. Okay, A, B, C, or D. Okay, all right. So what do you think is the answer to these questions, everyone? How sure are you with letter D, everybody? Some of you are answering letter A some of you are answering letter d okay so now the most important thing that all uh, i want you all to remember is uh, put your rational to the question okay all right so the answer to this question is going to be letter letter d congratulations everyone letter d is the answer to this question so why is letter d the answer everyone okay so someone mentioned the magic word and the magic word is going to be increased intracranial pressure. Very good. So you have to remember that this patient is having a head injury, okay? Is, uh, has had a head injury and then there is an increase in the intracranial pressure. And letter D is what we call the Cushing's triad in increased ICP. Cushing's triad means the, the vital signs, which are your increased blood pressure, slow respiration and slow heart rate as well which are opposite of signs of shock okay so very good audrey letter d is the answer so you have your cushing stride increased icp uh, although i would like to remind you everybody i would like to remind you that 
in increased icp the early signs and symptoms could be uh could be uh, uh vomiting without nausea for example uh number one is a change in the level of consciousness okay a decreasing level of consciousness so deteriorating level of consciousness that's the number one sign of increasing icp and of course fo uh, followed by vomiting by headache uh the cushing triad the one that you see there the vital signs those are very important vital signs, the crushing triad in the NCLEX, okay? Uh, those vital signs are actually late signs of increased IC, ICP. However, but still, these are important items to consider in this question because with letter D, what can happen will be brainstem herniation, which basically means that the structures of the brain will be displaced and damaged because of the pressure. Okay, now letter A could be the next priority if you want to because letter A is a patient who just came in after a cerebral angiography procedure. And we know that cerebral angi angiography procedure is an invasive procedure. So we may have to really look at letter A as well. You have to look at letter C. Letter C is also a concern because uh, the patient has meningitis. But then what comes first will be who is in immediate danger in the situation who is in immediate danger okay so that's why letter d is the answer because uh the patient is having crushing triad because of increased icp all right so very good everybody all right so most of you got the answer correct very good all right so we also have rich rich trying thanks for being here tonight also are you ready for our next uh question our next question will now again be on delegation everyone so delegation everybody and our delegation question here is select all that apply so in the NCLEX select all that apply happens okay you see that in different um, practice questions select all that apply regarding delegation okay so get ready everybody this is our question for delegation okay the nurse works with a licensed practical nurse in the neurological rehabilitation unit. So this is a neuro unit again. Which of the following tasks can be delegated to the LPN? Select all that apply. Okay, select all that apply everybody. Okay, so this is the question. Select all that apply. A, irrigate the suprapubic catheter uh, tubing of a client with neurogenic bladder due to multiple sclerosis. B, administer naloxone hydrochloride IV on a client with respiratory depression due to opioid overdose. C, monitor the client with traumatic brain injury during the first 15 minutes after the start of a blood transfusion. D, monitor the color of secretions of a client with open tracheostomy due to ALS or amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. Or letter E, change the dressing of the gastrostomy site of a client with cerebrovascular accident. So... This is a tough question, I guess. So what are the tasks within the scope of practice of the LPN, okay? And remember, the registered nurse cannot delegate an unstable patient, okay? So think about your scope of practice and the unstable patient as well, all right? So A, B, C, or D, okay? and e so which one everyone okay so what do you think is the answer okay all right so the answer to this question everyone <laughs> okay so let's dissect the question all right so now let's get the answer okay so some of you are still answering the question okay so we have Audrey, okay, we have Mirna, she mentioned that A, D, and E. Okay, we have uh, Jericho, Javier is A, D, and E, okay, all right. A, D, and E for Do, not the twin, okay, all right. All right, so Royce erased A, D, and E, okay. Now, the answer to this question, everyone, are you ready? So the answer to this question is going to be letter... All right, so everybody's still answering. The answer is going to be yes, A, D, and E, everyone. Congratulations for those who got it right, okay? And I will explain why A, D, and E is the answer to the question. 
you should know that the LPN scope of practice covers the following. So number one, you ask yourself, is irrigation of a suprapubic catheter within the scope of practice? Yes, it's within the scope of practice. Is the patient in letter A unstable? No, there's no indication this patient is unstable. This is a multiple sclerosis patient, okay? So the answer is going to be letter A. It's within the scope of practice. Letter D is included because LPNs can monitor the color of secretions of a client with open tracheostomy. So LPNs definitely can do assessment, okay? Letter E, change the dressing, especially sterile dressing, for example. That's within the scope of practice of the LPN. Congratulations, everyone. Most of you got the right answer, okay? Now, let me discuss something really very important here. If you look at letter B, B is really wrong because that is naloxone. What makes B wrong is the word intravenously, okay? Intravenous, because in the scope of practice of LPNs, they're not supposed to give um, intravenous medications, okay? That's for the RN. So automatically, B is out. You eliminate that. Now, letter C, monitor the client with traumatic brain injury during the first 15 minutes. Now, the LPN cannot monitor a client during a blood transfusion because blood transfusion after that is started by the RN, the RN should stay, monitor the patient for the first 15 minutes, okay? The LPN may take the vital signs before and after the first uh, the first 15 minutes of blood transfusion. She can do that. Even the UAP can get the vital signs before the blood transfusion and then after that as well. But the first 15 minutes, the RN should stay, okay, to monitor the patient. Okay, with letter D, that's correct. Monitor or assess the color of secretions. Is this an unstable patient? No, this is a what? This is an ALS patient, chronic condition. So, but then again, remember this. Okay, when it comes to assessment, and I want you all to listen to me, okay? When it comes to assessment, initial assessment, assessment of an unstable patient, that would be the registered nurse, okay? So for example, you have a patient who came into the emergency room having cervical spinal cord injury, who will do the initial assessment of that patient? If a patient is having shortness of breath, you know, suddenly in the unit, who will go to the patient and give and uh, do the overall assessment or assess that patient? That would be the registered nurse because unstable patient. But LPNs can do what they call focus or specific assessment. Okay, LPNs can auscultate bowel sounds. They can count the heart rate. LPNs can also monitor the drainage of the uh, colostomy, for example, or uh, also uh, can monitor the color of urine. The LPN can do that, specific assessment only, okay? So that's the responsibility or that's within the scope of practice of the LPN. But again, initial assessment, that would be your RN, okay? So I hope I made myself clear on that. So number one, when you're talking about delegation, and I've been talking about this for a long time, you know, always look at the scope of practice and at the same time, look if it is an uh, stable or unstable patient, okay? So we don't have really unstable patients there, I guess. So uh, when, you, when, you, when, you, when you talk about um, uh, ALS, that's a chronic condition, okay? So very good, everybody. You got uh, the answer correct, okay? And Bobita said the first 15, for blood transfusion is RN. Very good. Okay. All right. So hopefully you understood the differences in terms of assessment between a registered nurse and then the LPN. Because LPNs can also assess. It's part of the training of nursing school, right? But again, for the UAP, you cannot delegate tasks that requires complex thinking or complex uh, complex critical um, thinking, you know? So like, for example, uh, monitoring the uh, color of the urine of the patient is not part of the work of the UAP, okay? So are you ready for our last question for tonight, everyone? Okay, our last question for tonight is going to be another one. It's going to be on delegation again and select all that apply. So I know that most of you select all that apply is your number one challenge in the NCLEX, right? So my advice to you also is this, when you are reviewing when you review, make sure that you make three columns. Make three columns and you send it to me, okay? No, I'm just kidding. But you make three columns, RN, LPN, and UAP. Whenever you encounter a question in the NCLEX about delegation and 
prioritization, especially delegation, you put those tasks under each column. For example, LPN. So make a list when you're answering practice question. Make a list until such time that you have your own list of those specific tasks that an LPN can do, an RN can do, and the uh, and the uh, UAP can do. Okay, because in most books, the uh, the uh, uh, there's not a lot of examples. So what you can do is take notes whenever you are uh, reviewing for the NCLEX. Okay, especially if you're reading the rational for delegation. Okay, all right. So let's proceed now, everybody. We have the next question for tonight. Okay. So again, this will be delegation select all that apply. Hopefully, everybody, you um, you are uh, enjoying our session for tonight. Can you please uh, give a feedback if you like the session tonight? Okay. So this one is select all that apply. Um, very direct to the point. Which of the following tasks will be appropriate to delegate to an unlicensed assisted personnel or UAP? Select all that apply. A. Document what the client ate during breakfast. B. Apply skin moisturizer on the client's leg after a shower. C. Measure the compression stockings for a client with venous insufficiency. D. Apply gloved mittens on the client's hands to prevent pulling out tubes or E, assist in the passive range of motion exercise of a client with stroke, okay? All right, everybody, I'm so excited with you guys that when you take your NCLEX later on and you have prioritization delegation questions in one way or the other, I was able to influence your thinking on how to process these kinds of questions, okay? So analyze the questions A, B, C, D, and E. Okay, and again, don't forget my advice. Whenever you review and then you answer questions on delegation, you take notes, okay? Take notes, make three columns, and write down examples of delegation or scope of practice for the LPN, the RN, and also the UAP so that you will not forget, okay? So everybody, you should do that. Okay, so everybody, what's the answer to this question? Are you all ready? So some of you said, a b d and e so my my said a b d and e okay hi my how are you i miss you okay now we also have uh, other students okay so let's have the answer to this question everyone okay and the answer to this question is going to be a b d and e Congratulations for those who got the answer correct. Very good. Ray got the, uh, the answer correct. Very good. Congratulations. Okay. All right. So we also have Liza. Liza also got that right. Congratulations. Uh, documenting what the client ate during breakfast. Um, I think there's a missing word there. Document what the client ate during breakfast. I think it's a missing. <laughs> it's a typo. Okay. Uh, let her be applying skin moisturizer on the client's leg after a shower that's included. Um, letter D, applying glove mittens. So um, UAP can actually apply restraints, okay, as long as they have been trained. So they can do that to prevent pulling out tubes. And letter E, assist in the passive range of motion exercise of a client with stroke. Okay, so that's also correct, letter E. But always remember this again, everyone. I was telling you that, that when we delegate to the UAP, uh, they can do these things. But if you think the client is complicated or complex, then do not delegate the task to the UAP, okay? So uh, remember that uh, UAP can only handle patients who are uh, stable, okay? If it requires uh, complex, you know, complex uh, thought process or any evaluation or monitoring, for example, then we cannot delegate that to the UAP, okay? The scope of practice is for the activities of daily living, of course, okay? But of course, they can document what the client ate during breakfast and how many percent as well, okay? So congratulations for those who got the answer correct. So thank you very much, Ray, also. Thank you very much. I hope you learned something tonight, okay? So again, I would just like to make an announcement about our program. Our program, uh, we have the 10-day live comprehensive NCLEX review webinar that's coming up in July 18. So that's gonna be for 10 days. So we're starting our live webinar and we have students already for that. And then every Tuesday, we have the 12-week fast track NCLEX review, 12-week fast track live NCLEX review webinar. So reach out to us whenever you have questions and you can also attend our seminars, okay? All right.
Then another one, of course, everybody knows that I have a book in Amazon, The Simple, Fast, and Easy NCLEX Review. Okay? Everything that I do is to make everything simple, fast, and easy. My focus is always core content review. Okay? Always remember, core content comes first. You know, you cannot answer thousands of questions and pass the NCLEX if you don't have the core content, everyone. So if you have my book, everybody, thank you very much. And I know that most of you have been enjoying the book. Thank you very much, everybody. Okay. So again, everyone, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that uh, you enjoy our Thursday, uh, Thursday uh, Facebook Live and delegation prioritization. For the winner of the uh, raffle, you know, you, you have your names there, everybody. We'll pick the winner and then we will post that in our Facebook page, everybody. Thank you very much, everyone. And I will see you again, hopefully next week again. So Audrey said that, oh, I didn't know UAP can apply restraints, okay? So thank you for the information. They can. They can also apply compression stockings, okay? But they cannot measure the compression stockings because that requires the LPN or the RN to do that, okay? So everybody, you all be safe and I will see you next week. Thank you very much, everyone, and have a good night, okay?